If you guys enjoy what I do, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel and it's free and easy to do. Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of Final Fantasy XIV. We cover the stories both big and small, the epic and the cute, the silly and the tragic. I hope you all enjoy the ride and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. Connie Center and her siblings work together to listen to the elements and deal with any problems that show up in the land, and recently her brother has heard some bad news, which is what Isumi Yan, the conjurer trainer, wanted to talk to you about. Something's been stirring in the lost city of Amdapur out in the South Shroud. During the 5th Astral Era, the city was a thriving place of magic, but it was sealed during the time of the War of the Magi. Unfortunately, because of the most recent calamity, the seal on the city was weakened, which caused the forest around the place to start to die. That's a very serious thing to the elementals and the Pajal, so Isumiyan wants you to figure out why it's happening. Normally, the twin adders would have dealt with the problem, but they're stretched very thin, so hiring an accomplished adventurer is the best way for them to move forward. Since you agree to help, the Warrior of Light heads to meet Raya Osena at Camp Tranquil so she can explain what her brothers discovered. Raya already knows why you're there, but she wishes Isumi had explained more to you so she wouldn't have to do it, but it is what it is. Other than Amdapur Keep, the lost city of Amdapur is all that's left of the Amdapuri. There are no records on how the city got wiped out, but the elementals say it was done in by what they call an unclean presence. Elementals are always very vague, but Raya thinks that whatever her brother sensed is the very thing that destroyed the city. Arun Senna, her brother, finally shows up to fill in the rest while his sister complains about him taking so long. He probably had a hard time finding you because he keeps his hair over his eyes for some reason. Don't understand how that's not annoying. In any case, the thing he senses in Amdapur is getting stronger every day and is freaking the elementals out. Whatever's waking up in the city has them more afraid than he's ever seen them and he wants you to go into the city to see what it is and destroy it if you can. There's a wood whaler named Alphine guarding the place, so if you let him know why you're there, he should let you in. They send word ahead of you, and from what Alphine senses coming from the city, he admits that you're more brave than he is for going in there at all. The city's ether has been out of balance since the calamity, and now the place is a festering pool of rot and decay, and the animals have been driven insane by the changes in the environment. It's definitely not a place you'd put all that high on your list of vacation sites, especially if you have allergies or any self-preservation skills. As you head deeper into the city past the mutated insects, you reach a place where it seems like multiple void center bound, and at the very heart of the prison, you come across Diabolos, who at first thinks you're one of the white mages of Amdapur who finally thinks that they can destroy him. The Warrior of Light manages to win, but Diabolos claims that sleeping for so long has weakened him, so he turns into a cloud of bats and flies away. That means you're definitely gonna run into him again. That happens in the Shadows of Ma'ak series, which I'll link at the end of this video so you can see just what Diabolos does now that he's free from Amdapur. But that's a problem for later. Unfortunately, the issues with the Lost City did not end with Diabolos. After you drove the Void Sent off, Isumiyan and the other Pajal went into the ruins with the Elementals. The Elementals freaked out again, saying that something with incredible power was still deep within the city. And now the Elementals won't go back into the area until the threat's been dealt with, so once again you head back to Camp Tranquil to talk with Raya. She is of course happy to see you again. Since you were able to deal with the first threat in Amdapur, she figures that you can handle this one too. She would have told you about it on your first trip, but she couldn't sense it beneath the darkness that Diabolos was radiating. She wants you to do whatever it takes to fix the place, while the rest of them try to calm the elementals, so it's back into the city you go. The city is a little less tainted without Diabolos' influence, so you're free to search other areas, although the monsters there are still very much hostile. After dealing with some savage insects and making your way deeper into the city, you come across the reanimated corpses of Ma'aki and Amdapuri mages, who died during one of the battles of the War of the Magi. Then you come across some of the city's defenses that should seem extremely familiar. They are statues that look very much like Sin Eaters that you encountered in Shadowbringers. 
Now there are a few possible reasons why, but since none of them are confirmed as far as I know, I have to do a little speculating. So during the War of the Magi, when Ma'aki and Amdapur were trying to destroy each other, the Ma'aki made Shatoto figured out how to summon Void Scent, which gave them an edge. I think as a means of countering the dark ether fueled Void Scent, the Amdapuri tried to make light ether creatures of their own. This probably led to the birth of the very first Sin Eater, but due to the way the ether works on the source, the creatures would have either taken way too much ether to make, or would have been too weak to challenge the Void Scent. So instead of trying to make more of the creatures, they made stone golems in the shape of the Sin Eaters and powered them up with magic and used them to fight the Void Scent. That's all just a theory, but it's one that makes a little bit of sense since the Amdapuri wouldn't have known that the Void Scent came from another dimension and they wouldn't have been able to summon actual Sin Eaters since the creatures of the first wouldn't have existed at the time of the war. Regardless, the Warrior of Light fights his way through Amdapur and takes down the golems which turn out to be what the elementals had been spooked by. The defenses of Amdapur had likely both been awakened and damaged by the calamity that had weakened the seal on the city, and since they were built to repel external magic from Ma'ak, they probably thought the elementals were enemies, which is what made the elementals flee for their lives. In any case, the mission is accomplished, the day is saved, and all that's left is to deal with Diabolos and whatever he's planning. This concludes the story of the lost city of Amdapur. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, ding that notification bell, join the discord, and if you really want to show your support, sign up to become a member of the channel. Until next time guys, later.